Okay, welcome into my unfinished but very functional laundry room. My husband and I have been remodeling this house for a couple of years and while this room is not quite all the way done, it was done enough that I really wanted to film in here. So today I'm going to be talking about laundry, everything laundry related and I'm so excited about this because while I know a lot of people complain about laundry and hate it and find it to be a real frustration or pain point in their life, I actually really, really enjoy laundry. It's probably one of my very favorite household chores and I can stay fairly well on top of it. And it's not because I'm super lucky or something like that. It's just because I figured out some really helpful systems and different hacks that I'm going to be talking about today that has made the process really easy and actually quite enjoyable. first thing I want to talk about is really the bedrock or foundation that you have to build all laundry and items of clothing around and that is asking yourself these two different questions what does my life actually look like not what I wish it looked like or what I hope it looks like down the road but what does my life actually look like and how can my clothing or my children's clothing we're going to be talking particularly about kids clothes today how can our clothing support and serve that lifestyle so I love little light colored pale flowing linen dresses for my girls but the reality is my kids spend the majority of their life in the mud in the dirt and in water I love really cute clothes for myself, but the reality is I love gardening more than I love cute clothes and so I'm out in the dirt basically every day of the week. So I think before you can even really dive into decluttering and purging your clothes or finding clothes that work the best for you, the first thing I think you really have to focus on is figuring out what is your lifestyle, the reality of what your life looks like, and figure out the type of clothes that best suit that lifestyle and can best serve you and that moves on to the next huge topic that I was going to talk about and that is the process of decluttering your clothes now the goal of my laundry personally is to be able to open any drawer to immediately find exactly what I'm looking for without having to dig through clothes that are out of season too large too small too ugly or just not practical for what it is that I'm doing and so that's my goal my other goal is that while at least my kids are really little I want to only have one drawer of clothes for each of them and so currently uh, my dresser holds my clothes as well as both of my daughter's clothing and then they have some dresses in their closet but that hold, holds the majority of their clothes and I love that and that's the goal I want to keep for now while they're still small so now to dive into the practical steps of decluttering your wardrobe and creating the wardrobe you really like So the first step in decluttering your clothes that I think is the biggest thing that will make a huge difference in the amount of laundry you're doing every day is to remove the impractical clothing or the clothing that you decided did not suit your lifestyle and then really go out and restock it with things that do. Before I keep going deeper into this pool talking about decluttering, I wanna move over really quick to address some items that have worked really well for me. So as you're restocking, you can take these things into consideration, especially if you have little kids. Also, I wanted to mention really quick that if you have tons of variety of clothing, then you might not really even have to go out and get anything after you purge everything you don't need or want anymore, but if you're like me and maybe you kind of don't have a lot of clothes to begin with, I've kind of gradually made these changes over time, not all at once just because that would take a bit more of a clothing budget. And so don't feel like just with these tips that I'm giving you that you have to immediately go out and buy a brand new wardrobe if a lot of your clothes don't work that well. Just keep them in mind as I'm doing and then as I go out and get new things, I remember these mental notes and change accordingly. So for myself, I have tried to basically get rid of all my daughter's patterned leggings, I've talked about this before, and just keep 
denim leggings for both of my girls. The reason why I love these is that because they're all the same color and they're all very neutral, you can pair them up with a shirt or you can pair them up with a dress very, very easily. And so you don't need as much clothing. Uh, the next thing is that when they get holes in the knees, I just cut them off and make them into shorts for the summer. And then after that, I can just get rid of them as they get more holes farther up. But that is really useful and it just keeps my clothing very, very minimal. And so my four-year-old is able to pick out her own outfits and she's been able to do that for quite a while. And typically I like them because her pants always match either her dress or her t-shirts, which is really helpful. Now, there are a couple of other type of leggings I've tried. I've tried these cable leggings. They are a slightly cheaper brand. They're not super expensive, but I've not been impressed with them and I probably will be slowly purging them out because they shrink very quickly and don't fit the size that they claim to fit. Even if I buy a size or two up from the size my kids are actually in. So I haven't liked the cable leggings myself, so I'm gonna stick with the jegging leggings. The reason why I don't recommend these if you want a minimal wardrobe is because this is the back and they do not look good without having something cover the rear and so they don't really work just with t-shirts. That's one of the reasons why I love the jeggings because they can wear them with t-shirts or shirts. So, sorry, that's gotta go. All right, the next thing, I kind of mentioned this, but I don't like tons of patterns on my kids' pants. I also prefer no patterns on their sweaters, and I'm even trying to go with very minimal patterns on their coats, just to make putting outfits together so much easier. And so that's really helpful with blending and matching your clothes together in a way where your kids can do it, but they don't look terrible when they try to put together their own outfits. Uh, another thing is that I try to go with somewhat of a similar color scheme. Now, this has actually just happened naturally on its own because I really like kind of tans and browns and uh, burnt yellows and those type of colors and so naturally my kids' wardrobes have kind of turned more into those shades but whether or not you do that it just makes it a little bit easier for everything to kind of blend together and for outfits to be rearranged and mismatched a lot and still look really nice and neat. Another thing, I'm a huge fan of having my kids match when we go out and about. Um, I have three little kids now and so it's so much fun. Uh, there's a few reasons why I love this. For one, I just love the way it looks. I think it's so cute, but there's a couple other reasons. It's so easy now on Sundays to decide what my kids are going to wear. When if I pick out the matching dress for Cassie, I know Carrie has the exact same dress and so I have to make half the decisions. Or if I pull out Colty's sweater, I know Carrie and Cassie have the same sweater. So it's just so, so easy. I really love that about the matching clothes. Another reason why I enjoy the clothes being matching or just nice and neat when we go out and about is that when you have kids really close together, I had three kids in three years, I think people can tend to think that you're going to be pretty neglectful as a parent or just pretty overwhelmed and pulling your hair out all the time. So I think it, it makes it look like you have your act more together if your kids look nice and neat. And at home, my kids don't look nice and neat. They're muddy, they're covered in dirt, they're outside playing, they're having a great life. But when we go out and about, I do try to be more intentional about putting them together and making them look nice and neat. Another thing, I love light, soft colors, but I found that that's just not practical. And so while we have some light colored clothes that people have given us or I've bought in kind of by mistake or impulse, I really try to stick with darker colors now. I find that they hide the dirt so much better and it makes it so much easier when my kids are playing outside for them to be able to wear basically all their wardrobe and be able to get it dirty and I know I can bring it in here and wash it up and it's gonna be fine and there's not gonna be tons of stains. And so I have really, in the past little while, tried to steer away from the lighter colors for my kids in particular, but for myself as well. All right, so now diving back into the purging. So you've removed the impractical clothes, you've removed the clothes that in reality do not work. The next thing that I really encourage and have found to be so helpful, I watched my mom do this growing up, is she always kept a bin on the dryer for Goodwill items and another bin for pack away if it was too small. And I have found this to be so helpful because immediately as something gets too small, it's not getting stuffed back in the drawer. It's not getting stuffed, you know, back in the corner or in the closet. I'm immediately able to address, you know what, I don't like this, 
this is going to Goodwill. You know what? This is too small. I'm putting it in the bin. And so my drawers are never overly crammed with stuff that my kids or myself can't actually wear. And I love that about how easy it makes your clothes and your laundry and picking out outfits is just so nice. So I really encourage you to have those bins. I also now have a spot in my closet where I print clothes that are just slightly too big, where they just look a little messy and frumpy and I don't like that look on my kids. So I keep those in my closet. Before when we had no closet space at the old house, um, I had a little box in my daughter's room that I put the large, larger clothes in. The great thing about having this system is that when I find something I really like but it's slightly too big and maybe I don't have tons of extra space, I can put it in that bin, pull it out later, and I always have a rotation of larger clothes ahead of my kids and I'm also always getting rid of those smaller clothes and so they're not building up in my drawer and my laundry is just kind of getting out of control. The other thing that I really like about this system is that I'm very rarely in a desperate situation where I have to go out and get something I don't really like because I have some things that I've slowly been able to collect over time and so I've been able to be much more particular about what clothes it is that I have. For those of us who do prefer to have less, this idea was kind of mind blowing. But I heard this one lady say that if you are packing away your children's clothes, it means that you've gotten them too much clothes and so they're not able to totally wear it out until you can just throw it in the trash. So although my wardrobe is not that minimal yet, that has definitely got me thinking about how many clothes I still get my kids apparently. Okay, this is kind of a newer thought process that I heard, but I thought it was genius and I'm definitely going to implement it. And that is that less is best. I have kind of changed my mindset where I actually do do less thrifting now and I get a couple higher quality items. Usually they're matching for all three of my kids. I get them all at the same time. I can pack them away for the next season if they were on sale or whatever it is. I found that I personally prefer having less clothes, but having clothes I really like to see my kids in versus having a lot of clothes, but they're things I just don't really like. And I think in the end, you don't end up spending more money and you just have things a little more minimal and easier to manage. And so I personally, I'm starting to go more that direction and I've really liked it so far. Here's a great example. These are two coats that I found at North 40 in June. So they were really marked down. They were usually $63. I was able to get them for $17 each. And they're really high quality, much higher quality than I would have used to get. I was able to get them really on sale because they were out of season. They were just wanting to get rid of them. And they're matching, which is super cute. And I tried to find something with not a lot of pattern. And so they can still wear these with other pattern clothes. And it won't be super hard to get it to match. So I wanted to show you these real quick. The next thing is to always clean out out of season clothes. Now, right now, the house we live in is about... 1,300 square feet and so it's much bigger it's almost twice the size of the old place that we lived in and so I'm able to do this to a lot lot larger degree and it is much easier I confess I have room to store away stuff now that's out of season but I did try even in our 800 square foot home that we used to live at to still do this to clean out seasonal clothes so that I only have in those drawers or in that closet space what we're actually using in that season and i've just found that to be so much easier and it's so much less overwhelming when you're looking in your closet trying to decide what to wear or getting your little kids dressed so i want to talk about working with kids because when you start talking about getting rid of items and bringing in new things and changing things around it might be a little upsetting I have an extremely sweet but very, very sentimental four-year-old and she has been this way since she was like one or two. And so she's not like me where it's where she's very unsentimental and can just get rid of basically anything. It doesn't mean much. She she has her very prized items and her very prized garments. And so I've had to kind of try to learn how to navigate this a bit. So the first thing that I want to address then in this topic is getting rid of things that you don't really like but your kids love. Doesn't it always seem like it's the things you hate the most that your kids like the most? At least that's how it's been for me. It's like the stained poofy dress that's like, seriously, do you have to wear that again? These are a couple of things that I've done to help with that. And I decided, you know what, I could cut back on the clothes a bit. There's a lot of stuff Carrie's wearing almost every single day that I really don't like that's so stained and so dingy and it just needs to be gotten rid of. Um, there was a couple of different things I did to make the process easier. For one, 
I would pack things away, put them in the pack away or the giveaway bin without mentioning it to her. And if time went on, maybe a month or so, and she has not asked for that item, then I am willing to get rid of it. If she does ask where it is, then I will give it back to her because I want to be respectful of her. So that's something that I've done. Other times, if it's just terribly, terribly worn out, then I will just tell her, Carrie, I'm sorry, but we have to get rid of this. It's just too worn out. Another option that I've done is if there's something she really likes, but it's just really in a shambles and I hate the way it looks, I've let her choose a different dress as a replacement. That's been kind of fun. And so she's getting something new, she's getting something I like, and I'm able to get rid of that item that I just really don't like. Another thing is that I just have boundaries. My kids know that if we're gonna go out to town or if we're gonna go to somebody's house, I'm gonna be probably picking out the outfit or giving them a choice of a couple different things to wear. But at home, they're pretty much free to run around naked for all I care. I like my kids being wild and free and playing outside and getting muddy and dirty and doing all the things Things I think kids should have the freedom to do as little kids but I still have some boundaries and so like I mentioned in there I have found something really helpful with my toddler is letting her have some freedom letting her have some independence letting her make choices but also setting up some boundaries and so maybe it's a Sunday morning or it, we're gonna go to somebody's house rather than just being like Carrie go pick out anything you'd like to wear I'll pick out two different outfits that I like and I'll say Carrie you can pick which one you like best and you decide and that helps so much if your children are maybe a little overwhelmed by lots and lots of options sometimes it will just take my daughter so long to decide because it's just too many options for her little brain and so that's been really helpful but you're still letting them be independent and make some of their own decisions which I think is really good another thing is that I try to teach Carrie patterns and style and I found that that's really helpful. Um, I tell her, you know, a pattern and another pattern don't usually go together. Usually you want a pattern and you want a solid color and you pick out the solid color to go with one of the colors in the pattern and together it really ties together your outfit. And so it's really cute now because she notices those type of things usually and that's really fun. Another little tip that I heard that I thought was so, so good from the book called Declutter Like a Mother was that the lady said to always look through clothes people give you before you give them to your children or let your kids see them because this is usually how my daughter ends up with things I really don't like but I feel kind of bad just taking them away once she finds it in like a bag of clothes someone gave us and it's like her new prized item. So that's another helpful tip. So we've talked about decluttering, we've talked about getting rid of those seasonal clothes, all that stuff. Lastly, I wanna talk a little bit more about the practical daily functions of laundry and schedules of laundry that don't have to do so much with the major decluttering. So obviously, as I do laundry, I'm constantly cleaning out, I'm constantly purging, I'm constantly getting rid of, I'm constantly trying to notice, oh, you know what, Carrie has literally no pants without holes right now. That's definitely been the case a few times in her life. And trying to take mental note of those, clean out the things I wanna get rid of. So that's a daily process. Another thing, I do a load of laundry basically every single day. And if I do one load of laundry every day, and maybe an extra load or two on Saturday, which will have like sheets, my kids bedding, and usually white, because I usually only have to do about one load of whites a week, then that keeps me totally on top of the laundry because I just don't have lots of extra stuff always coming through that my kids have tried on and thrown aside and it's too small, it's too big, and I'm just constantly rewashing it. It just helps so much when you just don't have a ton of laundry to begin with that needs to be cleaned constantly. I try and fold one basket of laundry during quiet time every day as well. This doesn't always happen. Sometimes it'll build up for like two days and I'll have two baskets, but it rarely gets beyond that. And so folding is not overwhelming to me either. It's something I actually really enjoy. It's a time when I'll watch something, I'll listen to something. Um, and so it's just kind of a relaxing time for me where I also still feel like I'm getting something done. My little kids have these really cute knit sweaters that I'll run through the washer, but I noticed that they started to get kind of worn out looking really quickly. So I just got these and I put the sweaters inside out, stick them in these little bags. You can stick bras in these, underwear in them, and it just keeps everything from getting so tossed and twisted, anything that has strings. And so I found these to actually be 
quite helpful and they're literally like 25 cents each or something so these have been really helpful i recommend these i wish i'd had them sooner they would have saved some apron strings along the way i also wanted to mention with those little bags that my mom said she got them and started to put all of her socks in them and so she never has mismatched socks anymore because she just unzips the bag after she washes them and the pairs are all inside. I thought that was a genius idea and definitely what I'm gonna do. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great week and I'll hopefully see you in an upcoming video soon. All right, bye-bye.